All right, coming in at number 30 on our organizational value rankings, it's Travis Hamanek. Wadoosh, wadoosh, hit him with the hammer. Happy to have him back on a two-year deal, $1.1 million per season. He is the veteran presence on the back end, especially now with the departure of Nick Holden. I know we've long been fans of the way he plays. Your thoughts on the contract and what he brings this upcoming season for Ottawa. I mean, this was one of those dear deals where on Twitter, it was very divided. Uh, we were happy to have him back. That's a low number for a guy like Travis Hamnick and what he can bring to this team and back end that they're lacking in veteran kind of tough uh, leadership back there. And look, some people were enraged that not only was it a two year deal, but there's a no move clause. <laughs> yeah. Ross is absolutely shocked. Somebody wants to be in Ottawa. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I, this is a time in Hamnick's life where the money isn't the main thing. We looked at his uh, overall earnings on Cap Friendly, and let's just say he's doing all right <laughs> in what do you total. Think I think we talked about this. It's what, 42 mil or something? Close, 36. 36, yeah. So he's doing okay financially. So he's not going to try to break the bank here. The thing is we heard his um, garbage day locker clean out interview and he was raving about Ottawa. I want to be here. I love the culture here. My family loves it here. I want to have stability. So they gave him that to your deal and they said, Hey, look, if you want to be here, you get to be here. They gave him a full no move clause, which is saying a lot. Uh, that's like, that's something the senators do not do and have not done in the past really. So I think, that was the only way you're going to get him to stay. And I do believe there is a role for him here. Even if Ross, he becomes your 6.5 defenseman, you know, like not quite a full sixth guy and not quite a full seventh guy. Maybe he gets into somewhere between 35 and 50 games a year. Oh. And I, I think that would be okay. More Nick Holden played 65 last year. And that's where I'm putting the number for Travis Hamnick this year. 55, 65 games is my guess. I think people underestimate how good he is at penalty killing. Yeah. He's yeah, the best, he's penalty, penalty best penalty killing defenseman on the team. Him and Jake Sanders. I was going to say. That's your number one pair. Yeah. 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 Okay. Who do I rather have eating shots? It's not Jake Sanderson. I'll tell you that much. Definitely. Bubble wrap him and keep him playing 82 games every season uh, for the rest of time. But like anyone who is disgruntled with Travis Hamannick, I would just say, go ask Jake Sanderson what you think about. Exactly. Travis. Yeah. Your favorite player's favorite player is Travis Hamannick. <laughs> yeah, that's like, Bra who did Brady Kachuk say his favorite player was? All-time answer. I'm, I'm blanking on it now, though. Oh, uh, Barrett Jackman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you'll love to see that. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. Hamannick does so many things. He blocks shots. He He's killing penalties. And it... 143 block shots in 56 games, dude. And, and he had some key block shots where you're looking at games and you're like, if he doesn't block that shot, this game's going to overtime. The Giroux slap shot goal yep. on the breakaway doesn't happen unless Hamannick eats four pucks. The goal, right after the goal, they cut to Hamannick and he's just drifting to the bench in so much pain. Well, he, he was one of those guys that uh, Zoo broke his jaw, but what happened to Hamannick that one game oh, from when a block got, shot? Well, he also, And then they scored right after. He also got smoked in the face by Thomas Shabbat on the bench. <laughs> yeah, all-time blooper moment. Oh, my God. Yeah, um, best play of the day. Yeah, but th the thing is, this defense group is very good now. Arguably one of the best decors that this franchise has seen in a long time. But you still need guys like Travis Hamannick. And I know the analytics people are screaming at their computer. They're they're pulling up the heat graphs as we speak. But I wonder what uh, Sean Tierney thinks of Hamannick. Yeah, that's the thing. We, we know what those people think of Hamannick. But I, there's so much more that goes on into, into the game. And a professional hockey team is, believe it or not, more than just the on-ice uh, attributes. Like, these are people. These are their jobs. you got to go in to work every day. And you need guys that have been through the grind of many seasons and have playoff experience and things like that, that the younger guys can lean on. So I think Hamnick is, is a perfect example of that. And at one point, like just, if you look at it, just no kind of a uh, bias or opinions, a guy that's going to do what he's going to do for 1.1 million is solid value. In my opinion, 56 games last year, six goals, 15 assists for 21 points, which is,
not even close to last on the Senators. He was actually kind of an offensive defenseman, funny enough, last season. More points than Eric Brandstrom. Like, yeah. He was put in a position where he's a shutdown defenseman. He ends up putting up some points as well. And and just to your point about the, the age of the Senators' back end and needing a, a vocal leader who's older, this is the age on the back end for Ottawa. Top pair, 26 for Shabbat, 25 for Chikrin. Yep. The second pair... Who, who do you want to have on there? Sanderson and Zoop. So why yeah. don't we do 21 years old and 27? And then the third pair is two 23-year-olds in Eric Branstrom and Jacob Bernard Docker. The oldest defenseman there is Artem Zoop. He's 27. Yeah. He doesn't even speak English. Yeah, yeah. And he he doesn't have a lot of NHL experience, really. So Oh, he came over two years ago, right? Yeah. So, and one of them was the shortened season where DJ had him as a healthy scratch to start the year. Don't even get me into that. <laughs> but Travis Hamnick at 33 years old, I think that for him, it was stability getting that two-year deal. But 1.1, I mean, come on. For a seventh defenseman, that's less than than Nick Holden was making at 1.3 to do a similar role. So Travis Hamanick, last year, where did he come in last year on the list? He came in at 28. So he's down two spots. Okay. Organizational rankings, number 30, ending the tier of depth NHLers. 